today's experiment, you have done you have done it in two different experiments. You have collected gas, which is the oxygen, on water when you did the pop sound, correct? Copper carbonate decomposition. You remember that green solid? Mm -hmm. So when you heat it, it's gonna produce CO2 and you bubble it in a small tube that contains carbon dioxide. That was in experiment three. Okay, guys. Today we will combine these two experiments, but we have to know the quantity of the copper carbonate that we use. And also we will measure the quantity of gas that will form. Okay? So how you are going to do this? First you start by filling the tube. Make sure that this is closed, the pinch card. You will need roughly a liter and a half. Also, you will need some water to, to fill the tube, this one. Now this one, you cannot just put it like this, like the hydrogen tube, because it might fall. So you need to use a stand. So to fill the tube, you need to fill it gently, so you don't leave any air bubbles inside the tube. air bubbles will contribute to the experimental error. Now, look how I filled it up. So, to the maximum. And then I will take my, so a finger that I can close it, and also it's convenient for me to rotate my hand. Now, while I keep the mouth of the tube inside the water, I can just now it doesn't need to be that tight, it just needs to hold it. As you can see here, that it's not positioned to the uh, hole. So I will just move everything with the stand and position my tube, center it to the hole. Now for the second part of this experiment, I need to set up my burner. Now I need to make sure that my I can reach the tube. So I don't I cannot put it in a position where I cannot reach my tube. That's how it has to be. Now you lift it up because the flame has to be a gentle flame and I still can reach my tube. So this is this is good. Now a few things to pay attention to before you put your copper carbonate in your tube is that the tube here there's water this water when you when, when you will heat it it will evaporate and the gas will come here so that's going to be also a part of your experimental error to minimize experimental errors we need to dry it okay so now have it dry and then position it again i will repeat if you if your flame is close to the clamp, it will burn. So you don't want this to happen. We will measure around 0.5 grams of copper carbonate. So you can measure around 0.5, which means that it doesn't need to be exactly 0.5, as long as you record the mass that you have. Wait, you take all numbers, okay? So as you can see, I'm gonna measure 0 0.5, 0 0.37, or 38. I can just record this number. You need to transfer it to your tube. You take in the corner here, you bend the weighing dish, you put it inside your tube. You bend it this way, walk on it this way like this, to make sure that there is no, no much solid, or even no solid is stuck, stuck on, on the weighing machine. Now, I'm ready to start my experiment. 
very important that before you start heating, you should do what? Open the pinch clamp. If you don't open the pinch clamp and you start heating, the pressure will build up inside this tube. It will explode. So now I'm ready to start heating. So make sure that my burner is closed. Open the gas in here. As I said guys, the flame has to be gentle. If the flame is not gentle, I will lift it up. There you go. So now, as you can see, the carbon dioxide that's forming inside the tube from the decomposition of copper carbonate is being collected in here. Now this tube is graduated, zero at the top and to 50 at the bottom. 50? No, 100. 100 milliliter. Now this will help me measure the volume of the gas. Okay, and I will also be able to measure the pressure outside, and this will help me to calculate the pressure inside. Now the pressure outside is the pressure of, is the atmospheric pressure. Now when we stop the heat, when we don't see any gas bubbles coming up, it's very important to stop right away when you don't see any of the gas bubbles forming, because the tube, if you heat it for more time, it will melt, okay? So now, as you can see, that I have less and less gas bubbles coming out. Right? So you see, I don't have any gas bubbles anymore. So right away, turn off the burner. And when I turn off the burner, I close the pinch clamp, and I open the tube right away. If I don't close the pinch clamp and I keep it connected, when this one starts to cool down, so the air or the gas inside it starts to get compact and then it will suck the water, some of the water inside. I need this one to be dry because I need to measure the way the mass of this black solid, which is what? Which is copper oxide. Copper carbonate, when it decomposes, it gives copper oxide plus CO2. The CO2 is right now here. The copper oxide is here. And I know how much I measured from I weight of the copper carbonate. I can measure the mass of this one. And I can measure the volume of the, copper, uh, the carbon dioxide. Okay, guys. So this is the setup of your reaction. Now, what you were supposed to do, you should have measured the volume of the gas. That's volume of the CO2. Okay? And also, you should have measured the height of water, H. How this is going to help you? Also, you measured the temperature the temperature of water. You found it say for example 20 degrees Celsius. Okay. Now, how all this data will help you figure out how much per gram per mole of CO2 you have formed. Right? So, I have volume. I can measure the pressure. If I can, if I know the volume, the pressure, the temperature, I can use PV equal nRT. So in this case, we will consider that CO2 is behaving ideally. Okay? So to measure the, the pressure, pressure of CO2, it's equal to atmospheric pressure minus the pressure of water vapor 
minus the height of the water divided by 13.6. This 13.6 is the density of mercury. Now, as I mentioned, the water uh, vapor pressure, you can find it at the end of your lab manual. At 20 degrees Celsius, for example, it's going to be 18 16.5. At 20 degrees Celsius, the pressure of water vapor is equal to 16.5 millimeter Hg. Okay? Atmospheric pressure, we have measured it 100.9 Pascal. You can either convert it to to ATM, or, or since this is a meter, a millimeter Hg, and this is millimeter, so when you divide by 13.6, it's going to give you millimeter Hg. So it's better to convert it to what? To millimeter Hg, where you can use that every six, seven, 760 millimeter Hg is equal to 101. 0.325 Pascal. Now, once you have the pressure of CO2 and volume of CO2 and the temperature, which is 20 degrees Celsius, you guys will use your own, which is 293 Kelvin. So you can calculate the number of mole, which is equal to PV over RT. So from the number of mole, you can calculate the mass of CO2, which is equal to number of mole multiplied by the molar mass. So this way you can calculate the mass of CO2. Now if we go to your main reaction, copper carbonate solid, it's going to give me copper oxide solid plus CO2 gas. The reaction is already balanced. So every one mole will give one mole and will give one mole. Now from the experiment you have calculated the M experimental and the M experimental, right? You have calculated that. Yes. Now from the mass of copper carbonate that you have measured at the beginning of your experiment, you can find what? The mass theoretical and the mass theoretical of both of them. What can you get from here? Uh, the percentage. percentage error, which is equal on, which is equal of mass theoretical minus mass experimental over mass theoretical times 100%. Since also you are working on your own report, we are not asking you any questions to be on the safe side. Calculate the yield which is equal to mass uh, experimental divided by mass theoretical multiplied by 100%. You also do the same for CO2. And check your experiment. Does it match or not? Now there is another thing that you have to 
that you have to compare is that based on your experiment, check if you can find that number of mole, number of mole of CuO, copper oxide, you know the mass of it, right? Yeah. You have measured it. You divide it by the molar mass. Is it equal to the number of mole of CO2 that you found? They should be equal because the ratio is copper oxide CO2, they are 1 to 1. So that's going to help you confirm the stoichiometry. Experiment, experiment the, the stoichiometry. They should be very close to each other. And also copper, copper carbonate. Or also the copper carbonate. They should be close to the copper carbonate. The closer to each other, the less error you will have. Okay, guys? So, when you submit your report, make sure that you show all these calculations.